Good morning, Father God. Praises unto you for this new day. Without a warning, the storms of life are raging and refuge can sometimes seem hard to find. But we bless you, God, for the reminder that in you we have refuge. Speak over us and into our spirits now we pray. Amen. Everyone wants to feel safe in life. He wants security for the here and for the future. This is why we invest in things like insurance and pension plans and try to have a little emergency fund. The search for refuge occupies almost or every waking hour. The storms of life, however, seem to blow in every single place you can think of. There is absolutely no safe space on this earth. Refuge is only in Christ Jesus. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in times of trouble. Hurricanes have showed us that there really is no refuge. There was a time when Europe was included in this no hurricane haven. Not so anymore. The earliest named system in Europe was Debbie way back in 1961. But then came Tropical Storm Martin in 2022 and impacted Ireland and parts of the UK. And then it was Panama, that safe haven way outside the hurricane belt. It has never had a direct hit and storms usually pass anywhere between 300 to 600 kilometers away, quite a distance. But in 2022, Hurricane Bonnie passed just about 160 kilometers, way too close for comfort. Aruba, that small Dutch island tucked away south of the hurricane belt, takes the cake. For about 140 years, only six hurricanes passed within 62 miles of the island. But then came Janet in 1995, followed by Ivan in 2004 and Matthew in 2016, all of them impacting the island. It seems that the idea of refuge on this earth, even from hurricane, is a myth. God alone is a refuge. And this refuge does not prevent the storms that life brings, but it makes us solid as mountains so we can weather our storms. David declared, He only is my rock and my salvation. God is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Psalm 62 verses 6 and 7. This psalm was penned at a time when David was dealing with the rebellion from his son Absalom. Absalom's rebellion started slowly with talk, words. 2 Samuel chapter 15 verses 2 to 5 describe how Absalom would stand at the gate of the palace and talk with people who came seeking a hearing on their matters. He would tell them that there was no deputy of the king to hear them. And if he were king, he would ensure that they got justice. He insinuated that David did not care about the people and was inefficient in his role as king. Word soon got to David about what Absalom was doing. This was a son that David brought back home after many years of estrangement. It hurt David deeply. It was then that he wrote this psalm. The storm that David faced then was the hurtful words of his son and the wrongful accusations. He began the psalm with these words, Truly, my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He's my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Psalm 62 verses 1 and 2. David could have hastened to defend himself. 
and let the people know that Absalom was lying. Certainly, he could have found some witnesses who would tell what a great job he was doing as king. But he took the approach of waiting, waiting for God to defend him by quelling the storms of lying tongues. God is my defense, my refuge. I shall not be greatly moved, David said. Oh, David called them liars and attackers, and he expressed how heartbroken he was. Yet, the essence of this psalm was, God is my refuge. I will patiently wait for him to defend me. I shall not be moved was not about physically occupying the palace, because we later see David telling his soldiers to come, let us run away from Absalom. It was a declaration that nothing can shake me when I am sheltered in God. He encouraged his subjects in like manner. Psalm 62 verse 8 reads, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. It is never easy when verbal attacks and cruel accusations are leveled against us. The natural thing to do is to try to defend ourselves at best, and at worst, we counterattack. And when the attack comes from people who are close to us, that makes it even harder to digest. Sometimes, though, we must experience disconnection so that we can learn what hurricanes teach. There are no safe haven outside of the Lord God or refuge. Scriptures tell us the arms of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. The winds of life storms will ruffle us from time to time, but it's all so that we can refocus and place our dependence where it really belongs on God. If we take matters into our own hands while saying God is our refuge, we're fooling ourselves. Taking refuge means walking away, running away even like David did. It means leave the evil tongues wagging and leave the vile lies floating and find refuge in God. Those who seek refuge in our Lord are strengthened by Him. A very popular Christian hymn reminds us, The Lord is our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may betide, a shelter in the time of storm. Let God cradle you until the storm passes by. Psalm 27 verse 5 reminds us, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. Let us pray. Dearest God, we thank you for being our refuge from the storms of evil tongues and vile accusers. Take away from us, Lord, the tendency to jump to defend ourselves and replace it with the wisdom to find refuge in you. We ask you, God, in this moment to keep us safe and comforted until the storms pass by. We praise you, God, and we say thank you for being our refuge. Thus we say, Amen and Amen.